Well, I tell you, I just, uh, this is something else. So, I was watching all the prepping channels back when, what, a month ago or 24 days ago, when they got rid of the Speaker of the House. They voted him out. And I, I heard in all these videos that I was watching and on the news and even the conservative news, everybody was saying, this is the end of democracy. We got rid of our Speaker of the House. It's the first time in history. We're all going to die. <laughs> One guy actually said it that way. <laughs> and I was just shaking my head. I, I just cannot understand why. We all have to live in fear. So you go down in the comments section, I've lost faith in, faith in the, in the uh, Republican Party. I've lost faith in Congress. And, I've, and that's fine. Okay, you've lost faith. But my brain was thinking the whole time, wait a minute, this is the first time in history this has happened. Now, here's what was interesting, is our previous Speaker of the House, the, the Democrat Speaker of the House, I don't want to say her name because I'm not sure YouTube would really appreciate it, She'd been Speaker of the House years ago, I guess, what, 2012, somewhere around there, and then she was out, and then she was in. And so she was from California. And so then we get a Republican Speaker of the House, and he's from California. So I'm thinking, huh, we replaced one with the other. What changed? Nothing. Nothing changed. I mean, it was all the same policies. Spend money, spend money, spend money. That's all Congress knows how to do is spend money that we don't have. And so we're all frightened and preppers are frightened and everybody's frightened of inflation or hyperinflation or whatever. And so when we finally get rid of the guy who's spending all the money, oh my goodness, what has happened? Why is this a bad thing? First of all, we all scream constantly. Well, not, not me, because I know we live in a republic, but that's beside the point. This is the end of democracy. Well, what is more democratic than voting to get somebody out of office and then voting again and again and again and again to get somebody else better into office? Isn't that the definition of doc democracy? So the end of democracy is we actually use democracy. It's the end of democracy. So, so then they nominate a guy I really like from Ohio and I've watched him for years and I really liked him. And then I started getting frustrated when they, they didn't vote him in. I was like, oh, come on. And then they started talking about these people from liberal states that they were, Minnesota was the big name, one from Minnesota. Now I've been to Minnesota and Minnesota is a great state as long as you stay out of the cities, the Twin Cities, Minneapolis and St. Paul. You stay out of there, the rest of the state is, is nice. I've been up to Walker, Minnesota. Gosh, it's so beautiful and conservative. You'd be thinking that you were in Mississippi when you go to Walker, Minnesota. So I was thinking, well, I don't know much about this guy, but I'm sure he's, he's going to be what they call a rhino, Republican in name only, only, just like the guy from California. Well, they didn't get him either. Turns out they nominated some guy that's been in office for six years. Wow. That's amazing. Six years. Let's think about this for a minute. A guy who may not be completely bought off from politicians or special interest groups or whoever. I mean, he's only been there six years. And so I'm reading one of the ABC articles and they're talking about how terrible this guy is. Oh my gosh, he was he was part of the insurrection and he, he tried to overturn the election and he's thinking, huh, this sounds like a guy I like. And so then I learned he was from Louisiana. Now this is, this is what I really liked about the guy. He's from Louisiana. And, and that's important to me. You know, a Midwestern state, flyover. Of course, this one's a Midwestern Southern state and Louisiana is picked on a lot by politicians. You know, they wanna take water from Louisiana, the Mississippi River, which is already in a drought and ship it, well, pipe it. And guess who's gonna pay for it? the taxpayers and pipe it over to California so they got plenty of water so they can farm in a desert. I mean brilliance there. Let's just but finally got a guy from Louisiana as a speaker of the house. This is this is pretty good. And then today I listened to his speech. Oh my goodness. I mean I, I don't know anything about this guy. I'm gonna be honest. I've only what I've read in the last day or two. I really don't know much about him but 
it was a real solid speech. And if he even does half of what he said he's going to do, it's, it's incredible. He seems like a, a guy from the Midwest. He says his dad was a firefighter. Okay, so, that, you know, a guy in a small town in Louisiana fighting fires. He gets injured in a fire or something or another. And he's the only first person in his, in his family to go to college. Goes to college and talks about religion a lot. His dad died before he got into Congress. He said his dad would have been real proud of him. I bet. Now, I, I just want to understand this. We got a guy in there who we've all wanted in there for years, at least my lifetime. I've not seen a Speaker of the House this far to my liking ever in my lifetime. There was a few back in the 2008-ish time frame. There was a couple, but man, they, not really. I mean, they were, they were politicians. This guy's only been there six years. So just to be clear, the world has now come to an end because democracy worked. We voted someone out that was terrible and voted someone in that appears to be absolutely amazing. We had to go th through several iterations of people trying to weed out the good and the bad and the ugly. And we, we found like the miracle in Congress. It seems like a really good thing. But you know, we all got to be angry about everything. We got, always got to scream and holler how this is the end of the world. And everything is the end of the world. If something happens, it's the end of the world. Why can't we just look at something like I did and say, this is a good thing. I mean, even if we got a terrible person in there, and even, and even, I know this is going to sound crazy coming from me. If somehow the Democrat would have gotten in, because they, the Democrats put up a guy, but he could only get like 212 votes, you got to get 217. And none of the Republicans were voting for him. But even if they'd have gotten him in, that's democracy. That's how it's supposed to work. This is how our forefathers wanted it to work. And as soon as a Florida congressman says, this guy from California isn't working, let's get him out of there. I'm pretty sure there was a lot of people screaming to hang this guy. And I thought, man, this guy is brave. He's standing up against the Washington bureaucrats and the Washington lifers. And he kicked out one of the most politically influential people in Congress off the speakership. The third most powerful position in the world got him out of there. And what was really good was a bipartisan vote. Both parties voted him out. And we got one, even though the the left isn't going to like it at all. We got one that is even more in my corner. Now, I'm assuming my audience agrees with me politically. Now, again, I don't talk about politics very much, and I'm not trying to get into the politics of this. I'm trying to get into, this is our nation. This is how it's supposed to work. And I am so tired of people telling me we've lost democracy, Washington is broken, Nothing's working anymore when this is exactly how it's supposed to work. And it, we won. This is how it works. Everything swings back and forth. Swings back and forth. I mean, they're talking about now, and, and this is the end of the world. It's the end of the world. The Supreme Court, they're wanting to put term limits into place of 18 years. That way there's always a constant cycle of fresh justices in, in the Supreme Court. And that means every president gets two picks every four years. Okay, yeah, this is this is terrible. I mean, we're going to lose, finally, after my entire life of the Supreme Court being a liberal Supreme Court, we're finally got a conservative court. Oh, let's, let's put in term limits. Well, I remember what, just a few years ago, they were going to pack the court. That's what they wanted to do, pack the court with 19, 20, 50,000 judges that our current president would, would put in place. And guess what? Didn't happen. Back when Franklin Delano Roosevelt was in office, he tried to actually shut down the Supreme Court. He hated it so much. The Supreme Court is supposed to be a thorn in everybody's side. You're not supposed to like them. You make a law that you like and they say, nope, we don't like it because it's unconstitutional. That's how it works. Get over it. I dealt with a liberal Supreme Court my entire life. Now we got one that's... Uh, leans more my way, even though they've made a few decisions I don't like. That's how it's supposed to work. And then we scream and holler when it works. We scream and holler when it doesn't work. We just scream and holler. This is not the end of the world. Sorry, folks. Everything seems to recover 
every now and then. The Republic will save the world, just like it always has for the last 200 years, and it will continue to do. Let's look at things a little bit more positively instead of just immediately assuming everything is bad, because it's not. So while the preppers are all buying 20,000 rounds of ammo, which is what they said, that now all the ammo companies are shutting down apparently, you have to go out and buy 20,000 rounds per firearm. I'm just gonna sit here and I'm gonna can my food and do some experiments. So yesterday I was telling you, bear with me here. I, this kind of, this was that video. Yesterday I was showing you I was canning some pork. The problem with it is, is I never get to show you the results of how it went. But normally when I use Tadler lids, Tadler lids are a plastic lid with a two, it's a two piece thing. It's got the rubber gasket and the plastic lid. Normally when I use those, I have a huge failure rate. Well, yesterday we canned 30 jars of pork. So, and I want to say that every jar sealed, every one of them. So this is 24 and I got another six over there. So if you go to yesterday's video, I'll put it up next box at the end of this video for that video. Now, I've been telling folks for a long time that you got to test and you got to be patient. And you got to keep working. Well, this is one of the things that's been pretty frustrating with me. I feel like I'm a pretty good canner. I've been canning most of my life. Some I ever use Tadler lids. And it's, it's, I really want to use them because they're cheap. You buy them and they're reusable. Because if the preppers are right and this is the end of democracy and we're all going to die because we got a better guy in office, then I need to prepare. I need to be able to can food without much waste. So this is the first time that I've had a 100% success rate. This is pork. These things boiled over. I mean, there's grease all over it. it. It should not have worked, at least from what I understand. But that's the thing about my testing was I went against what all the people were telling me I was supposed to do. And I was trying things that I wasn't supposed to do. And that's what worked. I overfilled these quite a bit. And it boiled over and they turned a little dark, but they sealed. Now, the other thing we got going on is it's getting ready to freeze. We're gonna get down into 30s either tonight or tomorrow night. We gotta get these into the house. Now, the other day I was telling you I was doing a test. My concern is, is if these jars freeze, I feel like we'll lose the seal. When they freeze, the liquid in it will expand. That's how you break your pipes. The water expands when it freezes. So my concern is, is as it expands, it will remove the vacuum of the tattler lid because the content of chicken or whatever inside is lifting up, pushing pressure up against that lid, and it could lose a vacuum. That being said, on the other hand, as this gets colder, the vacuum should increase because when you can these, it's really hot, and as they cool, the vacuum sucks down on that lid and pulls in a vacuum. So I wasn't sure if freezing it, if I would get so much expansion that it would overcome the vacuum. So I ran some tests. This is, I'm sure you can see is frozen. This has been in the freezer, it froze, and then it came out of the freezer, so it thawed out, and we still have a seal. And then I put it back in the freezer, as you can see, it's, and it's still sealed. I am thinking that the pressure pushed up from the expansion of the contents in the jar do not overcome the vacuum that is being drawn in from being colder. I am not telling you to do this. Not at all. As a matter of fact, I wouldn't recommend doing it. And I don't think Carolyn and I are going to do it. The reason I want to run this test is if something were to happen. The other day, Carolyn had to go into the hospital. If she'd had to stay there and it was freezing, I wouldn't be able to light the wood stove. The house could have gotten below freezing before I got back home. Had it froze, the jars could have frozen, and I would have lost all that food. So I wanted to figure out how bad the loss would be if the jars froze. Now, the thing is, is everybody works in theories instead of testing. And I've talked about this a lot in my channel. People just assume things, and they assume it correct, and then they try to go and do it, and then they fail, and it's, oh, I can't do it. Life's too hard. I'm just going to quit. So that you want to live off grid, and it fails, and... You, you gotta test. If you wanna live off grid, shut off your electric on your house. Figure out what you need. Figure out what you don't need. Figure out how you get water. 
Well, this is a perfect example. Instead of waiting until it froze my house and I lost all my food, why not test it now and figure out if I need to figure something else out in the wintertime? There's just a lot of things that I find frustrating in the world about society. They, they just go along to get along. They don't what they call critically think. And I'm not saying I'm some sort of expert, I'm not. But I've never thought like society thinks. I know why I don't, but I know why I don't think like everybody else. And most people actually consider me disabled as a result of my thinking. But to me, I don't have to live in fear, constant fear, because society is gonna break down because we're not doing what we're supposed to be doing and everything's changing. And so in the comment section, somebody says, trust me, it won't freeze. It can't freeze under a vacuum. Um, how am I trusting you? Where'd you get your information? I tested. So if you click this up next box, take you to a video where I was talking about canning this food. So I hope I can inspire you to think critically. And you can live your dreams. Thanks for watching.